This program is brought to you in part by Swift Canoe and Kayak. People who know, paddle swift. And by Eureka, the spirit of adventure. The outdoors, fresh air, sun, water, wind, rain, and snow. A chance to reconnect with nature. In this series, we explore some of the places and activities that you can enjoy in the outdoors and all within a couple of hours of home. So join us as we get outside and recharge our soul. One of my absolute favorite things to do outdoors is get out camping in the backcountry. It's a very different experience than regular camping at a campsite like most people are used to. Uh, it's a lot harder, but a lot more rewarding. On this trip, I have come with a friend of mine, Jacob. I'm Jacob Novak, and I'm some sort of a new camper. I've camped a couple of times, but I've never been backcountry camping. It's my first time backcountry camping. Although he is taking outdoor education right now in high school, so they will be doing a trip, but this is his first backcountry camping trip. So I'm really interested to see how, how he does it this. We're just about to take the canoe off the car, pack it up and start heading out. Use the paddle across the boat. It gives you more stability. Yeah, yeah, so that'll give you more stability. I will hold the boat. There you go, and just move yourself forward and across. And a nice stable seat. And I'm gonna push it in a bit. We launched on Wolf Lake which is a fairly large lake. We paddled all the way down Wolf Lake. Uh, there's lots of little outcrops of rock and little islands that you can wiggle around if you like, it's, it's quite beautiful.
It's also fall, so the leaves are just starting to change. It just adds to the scenery. It's really, really cool. At the end of Wolf Lake, we come to our one portage that we have to do. Uh, okay, so getting out, uh, always maintain three points contact on the canoe. So it's either two hands, one foot, most often that's what it is, or two feet, one hand and keep your balance dead center in the canoe and work your way up to the land and step out either on the rocks ahead or the side, whichever looks easiest. So give it a go. And then hold on to the canoe, yeah, because I will go flying away otherwise. Just pull me in a little bit. Gently on the rocks, that's good, that's good, that's perfect, thank you. That's great. Now, when you portage, you've got to take everything out of your canoe, lug that to the other end of the portage trail. Then go back, get your canoe, and bring that back over. reload everything, and then begin paddling again. Well, maybe it's just the paddle I was using, but I did find when paddling that the inside of like my thumb, that area of my hand, start to hurt a little bit. No, it's like my thumb's like, it's like being like stretched out. Yeah. The skin of my thumb is being stretched out when I like paddle back. I'm sure if I paddle more, I'll just get used to it. Our paddle across Crab Lake started out beautiful. Uh, there was sun in the sky, you could see blue sky, but only for a little while. Uh, these big dark clouds came whipping in and it looked like it was gonna rain pretty hard. So we actually pulled the canoe over to the shore. Um, it's safer to do that, especially in a thunderstorm. Um, and took a little bit of shelter on shore while the rain came pouring down. We have uh, <laughs> just come ashore to take a bit of shelter from the rain. It's starting to rain quite hard now. Uh, thunderstorms rolling through, so we're almost at the site too, but not quite there. We stood there for a while and then thought, okay, it looks like there's a break. Let's get back in the canoe. Got back in the canoe and we got poured on again. So we were a little bit wet, a little bit cold. Uh, it wasn't too much further to our campsite. Um, we probably could have made it all the way had we realized how close we were. Uh, but these are the things that happen when you're backcountry camping. You've got to deal with the weather, changes in the weather, um, getting wet, um, you know, not being able to get to where you need to get to in time. So those are all things you've got to plan for and deal with while you're out here. Our campsite is really, really nice. There's a lot of rocky uh, hills, uh, looking over a marsh. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, push it up. Well, we arrived at the campsite. Uh, rain on us before we got here. Sun came out for a minute, 
Just enough time to set up the tarp and it's raining again. But I'm hungry, so I'm eating my lunch. <laughs> When you're backcountry camping, you've got to pack really only what you need. You don't want to pack too much because you've got to carry it. Uh, and you don't want to pack too little because you're going to need certain things. So the basics, of course, we needed a tent, we needed a sleeping bag, a sleeping pad to lie on. Today at my tent was actually pretty easy. It's not really a large tent, not really that complex. Most tents work generally the same way. We've set up our tents, so that means we're pretty much set. There's a couple other things we've got to do. Uh, we have to get some firewood. Yeah. So we can have a fire and uh, cook our dinner. I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, we also need to um, find a tree to hang our food in. Okay. Because uh, you got to hang it out yeah, overnight so that bears and other animals don't mm. get it. So, um, so we'll do that. It's also getting a little bit chilly now that the sun's starting to go in. So I'm going to get a sweater it. and then, uh, then we'll head out and grab some wood and stuff. Kay. Sound good? Sound good. Awesome. Let's go. Birch bark. Yeah. Birch bark is great yeah. for starting fires. It burns and catches. So we'll look at the bottom of the tree and see if we can find some. Okay. Yo, Ben, got some. Okay, great. Obviously, other campers have been here, and all the dead, dry wood that you might find lying on the ground, there's practically none of it. Maybe. Nope. So it was a bit of a challenge finding ourselves some wood. Also, it had just rained, so a lot of the wood was wet. So our campfire was a bit of a challenge to get going. Now, one of the things when you're out here that is worth doing is getting up early with the sun. The scenes that you'll see when you get up early are spectacular. There was fog and mist this morning just as the sun was starting to rise. Uh, and of course that burns off later in the day. So if you're lying in your tent and you miss it, you missed it. Uh, but it was beautiful this morning, absolutely gorgeous. For breakfast this morning, we had omelets. This is something I like to do out here. I pre-make everything I need and put it in a resealable plastic bag, some grated cheese, maybe some chopped up meat. You could put some onions, veggies, whatever you want in your omelet. Then I crack an egg into the bag. squish it all up and seal the bag and put it into boiling water for about five or 10 minutes. And then out comes this tasty, tasty omelet. It's really good. All that's left for us to do now is to pack up. Uh, 
Uh, so we've got to pack up our tents and uh, load up the canoe and then we'll head out of here. Overall, it's been a great trip. I think Jacob did a fantastic job. I hope he enjoyed it and I hope he does more of this. It's something that I definitely do again. Maybe it was just a little bit easier because it was just one night, but I did enjoy it. I didn't really find it that hard. Like it, maybe I should try two or three nights to see how much I like it then, but at least for now, I did really enjoy it and I'd go anytime.